but you do not need eight hours of sleep. You are choosing to get it. And the worst thing is that if you are choosing to get eight to nine hours of sleep and then bitch that you're overweight because you have no time to go to the fucking gym, you need to wake up and smell your own bullshit. It feels like I'm literally like, I'm, I'm, I'm like aging myself out right now. Yeah. <laughs> Do we need this? Oh, we don't. What's up, fam? Hope you guys are having the best day of your entire lives. Today, we are actually shooting a content podcast, a little bit of content at Dan Martell Studio with none other than the great Sam, all right? Sam and I have actually been working together for a long fucking time. He was actually a person who helped me and Brian with our content, our reels, our TikToks, our short form video for a very long time until he became Dan Martell's full media manager slash a partner in his media team, media company. So we're gonna be doing a bunch of content today. I'm gonna take you up to the studio right now. My mind run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it. Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress. In a content shoot today. Really? Yeah, me and Sam were talking. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. What's up, homie? How are you? How's it going? Nice to see you. Good to see you too. Daniel. Yeah. What's up, my man? How are you? Good. You guys got it rolling in here, eh? Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Okay, How are you? Huh? Yeah, always. Always. Oh, What's up? Good. Hi, doing some content with Sam. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be good. What's up, boys? You getting big as shit now, eh? <laughs> right away. No wonder Dan's looking so good. What's up, man? How are you? Pretty good. Yeah. What's up? Nice to be oh yeah, so much. So much. This looks good in here. You guys are killing it. Dude, this is literally one of the coolest studios I've ever seen in my entire life. They got the like, little gym, sweat every day, the little motto, prioritize the pump, because they make sure that they get the fucking pump in every day no matter what. A couple, couple standing desks, the walking pad, something set up so Daniel can get his makeup all corrected to make sure he looks clean as hell. Never happens because he doesn't get a haircut unless it's once a month. You look good. Thanks, big as shit right now. All y'all motherfuckers look big as yeah. shit. Yeah. All right, monsters and do something here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, bro. Yeah, so I, I really, I kind of freestyle it. Whatever yep. we want to talk about, we got an hour to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, anything you want to touch on that like, because I'm 100% going to talk about family and relationships. Yeah. That shit performs. Yep. Um, I'm also going to talk about uh, kind of the business side because I feel like maybe you could use some of that content on your page yep. you can use it if you want and then origin story stuff i think the come up story is really cool okay. i've seen him on godzi i don't know if you follow him on, on youtube i've or, seen him a couple times yeah yeah he he recently started like talking about more about his struggles when he was like 14 15 16 17 years old yeah um yours is a bit more in your early 20s yeah um but yeah, I think we could double down on that because a lot of people are on the come up and they want to hear like how you went through trials and tribulations. Done. Like you were sleeping like fucking three hours a night yep. and all that shit. So I'm down. Yeah. Super good. I'm super game, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's start on content. Like what, how, how'd you get into the content game? Uh, that's a broad question, bro. What do you mean? Like just like, yeah, like, like motivational content, business yeah. content? What are you thinking? Yeah. Cause I mean, you just mentioned like you hate re reading scripts, but like how, how did you start doing it if you like if you hate that part of it but you love some other part of it i'm just curious what that part is that's actually a really good question because i cannot stand reading scripts online <laughs> i fucking hate it when i look at a script a business script or a piece of marketing that the team sends me that i need to read verbatim yeah. it's like my whole brain shuts down but that's actually what kick-started the content creation process that i step into today when it comes down to me filming online like what got me into it originally was I just wanted to start voicing my opinion. Yeah. All right. We were running pizza domination. Brian's the head of acquisition, so he brings clients in, and I was head of delivery. So I teach them, implement all the stuff that we need them to do in order to build their businesses. Yeah. And when we started doing that, I was transitioning from fitness coach to business coach. So I didn't really need my Instagram anymore. Yeah. I had like eighteen thousand followers. Wasn't building it. Felt like I lost my identity online. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start speaking about stuff that I actually care about. And I didn't need to follow any script. I didn't need to like join anybody's conversation in their head or like follow a certain layout. Yeah. So I just started talking shit online. Yeah. Like, how'd you how'd you like, find your voice like t talking talking shit online? Like, what, what does that look like <laughs> for you? Uh, well, it originally started because I saw that there was a need for motivational content online, which yeah. we've always seen. Whether it was the text on screen, the workout videos, yeah, ET, always been a big thing. Yeah, the always OGs. been a big thing. You know, ET is like yeah. gets me fired up to the today still all yeah. the fucking time. No matter oh, yeah. what, I listen to it at the gym. 
Uh, so I started originally with that. Yeah. I would do like workout tutorials and like workout B roll and then add a bunch of clips to it. Yeah. And then one day I heard a video on Say Less Lifestyles. It's actually a TikTok page. Yeah. And this kid was talking about how you can't share your dreams and goals with everybody. And that video, I remember like hit me in the soul. Like I started like crying and like imp impacted me in a very big way. And I looked yeah. at Julia and I'm like, like, this is what I want to do. Like, this mm. is super cool. I really like this. And then it was like two days later, I had the thought of having a conversation with people on my social media talking about how you need to learn how to cut out negative opinions because yeah. like their opinion doesn't pay your rent. So I don't care what you think of me and I don't care what's going on in your head. I still need to show up because yeah. like, you could hate me, love me, ridicule me. I still got to pay the bill at the first. Yeah. Right. So I yeah. had this thought and I kept saying it, but I'm scouring TikTok and Instagram for those videos. Like I need somebody to say this so I can overlay it on my perfectly made workout video. And I just kept looking and looking and looking and Julia fucking snapped, man. Julia found my voice. She looked at me straight in the face and was like, you are literally telling me what you want to find someone else saying. Yeah. So why don't you just go say it? Like, just pick up a camera, babe, and say it. You've been teaching people for five and a half years. You get on Zoom calls for three hours. Why don't you just look at a camera and say what's on your mind? And I was like, okay. Yeah. So I just looked at a camera, said what was on my mind, and it just popped. The first video that we posted, it got 35,000 views like that. And then I started pulling clips from my podcast, and yeah. those started hitting like crazy, and then I just started running with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, dude, that's awesome. You mentioned five years' experience. Like, how much of putting the reps in has been a, a part of how you create content? Dude, I've created probably, what, 20... 2100 pieces of content across Instagram. Holy shit. Um, TikTok, I don't even know because it doesn't give you a counter. Yeah. Right. But I'm like on Instagram right now, I've got 2100 posts. Um, I've got 515 podcast episodes alone right now. And that's yeah. just me, again, turning it on, no script, no dissection, no breakdown, no theory, me just talking for anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes straight. Yeah. All the calls that we've done in our academy. So, like, the amount of reps that I've put in is countless across the board. But I always went in with each script, each video, each theory that I wanted to explain without wanting to put myself in a box. Yeah. I never wanted to be like, here's the three tip theory guy. Yeah. Because I feel like we have enough people out there like that already. Yeah. Not to mention my business partner is one of the best at it. Yeah. Like he is the three tip guy. He oh, yeah. is the fucking value king. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to be like that. And I don't want to try to compete with my homie on the same thing that we're producing. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just going to talk about what I like. I'm going to talk about what I enjoy. So I just started putting countless reps in. When it yeah. came down to creating the motivational content, the content that I do today, I did it for what, like two years, a year and a half with nothing happening. Yeah. Like I gained 5,000 followers here, 6,000 followers here. Nothing was really happening. And then it just blew up. Like it, just hit, it literally just hit a certain video, a certain stride, and it just exploded. <laughs> Next thing you know, it was like 80,000 followers, 100,000 followers, 200,000 followers. And then there was like a solid week and a half where I was gaining anywhere from 50 to... 90,000 followers like every two days. Holy shit. And they just hit and hit and hit and hit and just kept going on the upswing like crazy yeah. across all platforms. Dude, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. How how much of that, like, because you, you mentioned emotion earlier and that first video made you feel emotions. Like, is that what yeah. you want to do for other individuals? And if so, like, who is that individual? The who is that individual is a harder question for me to answer just due to the fact that I've never really thought about my niche. Yeah. I've just really enjoyed the fact that i can touch someone with my voice and yeah. help them get through a hard time yeah. if i was to niche it down it would be individuals who are struggling with self-identity yeah the fact that they feel like they can't get out of their own way they feel yeah. like they're stuck in the past and the story that they keep telling themselves is the reason why they can't see success because you've heard my story and a lot of other people as well like if i can see success so can you yeah. so when it came down to creating content like that emotion thing is everything to me I talk about this to my clients, my social media, people around me. My only focus is the one. I call it photo, but with an F, F-O-T-O, yep. focus on the one. Yep. Like when I hit a million followers on TikTok, I celebrated it for like an hour mm -hmm. and then I moved on. I hit like a million views. I'm like, oh, that's dope. That's fine. <laughs> where other people are grinding their entire lives to be able to do that, where it doesn't bother me because I'm more focused on the fact that I get like a DM or a comment where someone's like, this shit changed everything for me mm. like this is the reason why i didn't give up on my family i didn't give up on my goals i didn't give up on what i wanted to do like that is what i'm looking for because i know what it was like to like pick up my phone and hear something not to mention the reason why i love music so much and i love mu movies so much is because they make you feel emotion yeah like i'll watch something and it will impact me and the next thing i'll start moving differently i'll start acting differently i'll treat julia differently so i just want to be that voice for other people yeah. i want to be the person who yeah might offend you 
like I might hurt your feelings when you listen to a video, but I always say this in my community as well. I'd rather you hate me for a video that you saw, but then go change your life than hate yourself because you chose to ignore the internal voice in your mind and then regret your actions later on. Dude, that's, that's game changer. Mm -hmm. Um, how much of having a kid has impacted your life? Um, it's definitely hard. It's yeah. definitely hard. It's a weird, it's a very, it's a very weird thing to explain. And I feel like the reason why it was so weird for me for a long time is because I was so petrified of having it happen. You're scared of having kids. Oh, I was, I, me and Julie almost broke up twice. Really? My, my wife of today. So we've been together for seven years this year. Um, and we almost broke up twice. The first time was we were dating for three years and we had already talked about kids and talked about kids a couple of times. But then when it became a reality, I had a full meltdown. Mm. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I don't know if I want kids. And honestly, even though I love my dad and I love my mom, it was due to the fact that I had a lot of pent up emotions about my family. I thought I was going to do things that had happened to me when I was a kid to my son. Yeah. Um, or to my kid at the time because it was just theory. So three yeah. and three years into dating, when she brought up children to me, I had a fucking meltdown. Mm. And Julia looked me in the eyes, right? And I don't blame her for this at all, but she looked me in the eyes and she sat me down. And she's crying. and was like, if you do not want children, you need to tell me now because if you don't, I'm leaving you mm. because I want them. This is not an if, end, or but. This is not a maybe for me. I want children and I want them before 30. This was mm. two years before she turned 30. <laughs> so she's like, I'm not saying we need them now but I want ch children, so go figure your shit out mm -hmm. or I'm leaving you. So we lived in a 600 square foot apartment at the time. We didn't speak for almost two weeks, bro. Wow. 600 square feet, didn't say a word to each other for almost two weeks because every time we spoke, the conversation would come back up yeah. and I had no idea how to deal with it because yeah. on the other, on one hand, I knew I wanted children and mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be with her slash I couldn't live without her. But on the other hand, it was like every unspoken piece of trauma and pain that I had dealt with was like screaming like do not fucking do this but I had the realization moved through it yeah. it was like I do want them like I do want them I know I do so I might freak out in the future when we choose to have them but like I know I want them and then right before we actually decided to have Cade my son and we like dove into it I had another freak out really? we like went at each other like super fucking hard like screaming yelling arguing and Again, I worked through my shit and was like, I know I want them, but I just got to deal with that internal shit. End up, ended up having them. And yeah. The same thing. I went through a very dark, dark meltdown for like two months. When you had like, them? Bro, every day I was like, like bawling. Like wow. didn't know what to do, didn't know how to deal with it. Every time he would freak out, cry, have a meltdown because he's a baby, yeah. I would have a full meltdown. I'm like, what the fuck did I do? I'm going to ruin this kid's life. Why did I bring him into this world? I'm like, I don't want you. Not because I didn't yeah. want him, but I'm like, I literally thought I was going to ruin his life because I wasn't dealing with the shit internal. And then uh, one of my friends, Natasha Starcheski, mm -hmm. sat me down and she's like, listen, you need to sit in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? She's like, well, you dealt with so much shit as a kid. You have so much unresolved trauma. You didn't talk to anybody about it. You just brooded through it with your masculine energy. She's like, you can't do that with this mm -hmm. kid. Like, you can't just brute through the problem. Mm -hmm. you got to sit in it. So... For days and days and days, it was around the two and a half month mark. Um, it was just consistently sitting in it, sitting in it, sitting in it, holding my baby. He's screaming his face off. I'm pitch red. Julia would come up and try to help me. And I'm like, fuck off. Like, I need to sit in this. And that's not an exaggeration. Like yeah. the first couple of times I'd let her take him. And then everybody's like, Cole, you need to sit in it. So Julia yeah. would just have to suffer and watch us suffer. And then two and a half months in, dude, it was like, click. And the next thing you know, Julia came up from the bedroom one day and he's screaming. I'm holding Cade, smile on my face, cooking food. And it, she's just like, what the fuck? Like, it was just at 180 completely and my really? whole life just changed. And it's like on one hand, my life has changed a lot because obviously I have my son and I've had to make adjustments in my schedule to make sure that I give time to him. Yeah. But also on the other hand, like not a lot has changed. I'm still the same person. I'm still up at 3 a.m. crushing my fucking workouts, pushing myself every single day. But I also set myself up for that success. Yeah. I was able to retire my wife in 2019, so she never has to work a day in her life again. So she gets to do what she wants to be a mom, to be home with Cade, to deal with that burden slash gift at the yeah. end of the day. So I can deal with the burden of working all day to provide the life for them, which is also yeah. the gift in the long run. So it's like a weird question for me to answer because... 
the classic answer for parents is, oh, I'm so busy. It's yeah. so tiring. It's so intense and it's so beautiful. But also it's like a huge blessing in disguise for me because it like really showed me who I was as a man. Yeah. Like a really intense realization. Hell yeah. Do you think most parents use their kids as excuses Bro. to not do it's things? It's probably the biggest piss off to me in the entire world. Really? I'm, Tell I, me more about it. I've got a classic saying. I've said it on social media a couple of times, and I'll say it again right now. Parents should use their kids as a reason, not an excuse. Yeah. And what I mean when I say that is usually what I see, and people can argue until they're blue in the face, but let's look at the state of the world right now. What I see and what all of you guys see is children you, or parents using their children as an excuse. Mm -hmm. It's like the day-age thing. As soon as you have a kid, your entire life fucking ends. Yeah. You can't do anything. You can't work on your fitness. You can't chase your dreams. You can't do anything for you because you had a child. And I said this to Julia before we even had kids, even though I had a freak out about having a son in the first place, having a kid in the first place, I told her one of the reasons why I refused to become that person, that soccer dad who makes excuses, yeah. is because I just don't want to be what society, the standard is of what it is like being a parent. Mm. Like... The reason why I have that saying, your kid should be your reason, not your excuse, is because I don't want to be the soccer dad that falls into society standards. Mm -hmm. I'd never wanted to be the person with the matching house, with the matching minivan, with the matching car, <laughs> with the matching boring fucking life. Yeah. Right? Because I didn't want to fall into that same day and age thing of, again, like I just said, oh, I have a kid now, so I can't work on my fitness goals. Yeah. I can't work on my dreams. I can't make more money. Yeah. I'm going to develop a fucking dad bod, which drives me crazy in itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to do what everybody says I have to do. Mm -hmm. That's terrified me from the very beginning. So I refuse to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, don't get me wrong. It's harder. Is it harder to exercise and prioritize your fitness when you have a child? A hundred percent. Is it impossible? No. Mm -hmm. You just got to make it happen. Is it harder to chase your dreams? 100%. But is it impossible? No. You just got to make it happen. And people will see my scenario, my situation, and they'll be like, well, it's a lot easier said than done. It's not easier for you to say because... You don't have to work a nine to five. Touche, I get that. Mm -hmm. I also set myself up for this life before I had my kid because I didn't want to be that dad. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be the dad who was like, well, I'm just going to barely try to get by, not chase my goals, not work on my fitness, not yeah. do the stuff that I know I can do, and then blame my kid once I have them for why I never could eventually get there someday. Mm -hmm. The fuck kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> it drives me mental, bro. Like so many overweight parents just using their child as an excuse as to why they can't go to the gym when homie you don't even need to go to the gym you could do a 15 minute workout with them at home yeah just type in fit parent on tiktok and you'll see hundreds of thousands let's say millions of parents working out with their children in their house what's your excuse like there's none yeah if you can't run around with your kid without getting gassed there's a fucking problem here mm -hmm. and again the problem that we see in today's society is that if you say that out loud, you get attacked. You get ridiculed because those parents are trying hard enough. Okay, I get that you're trying, but you're not trying hard enough. Because if you want to be fit to be able to live longer for them and to be able to run around with them when they go to bed, you shouldn't be watching TV. You should be exercising. Amen. Right? Or you should be chasing a dream that could put your family in a better financial situation mm -hmm. instead of watching TV. Because we know, as entrepreneurs, we know all it takes is one to three hours a night of studying or hard, dedicated work, and you can completely transform your financial situation. Yep. I've done it. I went from having nothing eight years ago to living in my dream house with my dream cars and running a multi-million dollar business. But again, that's not society standard. Mm -hmm. So everybody just wants to coddle each other and walk the regular path, but I just disagree with it. Yeah, tell me more about that. Like, in eight was it eight years? Eight years, you went from a note, like a note, like this is zero, less than zero. literally zero, less than zero. Yeah. So, I did the math the other day, and it uh, it made me a little emotional because of the connections and everything that has happened over yeah. the last little bit. But I actually broke it down. So November fifth, twenty sixteen, was actually the day that me and Julia got together, and it was the day that I won my first fitness competition. Now, that day marks my spark into a better life. But mm -hmm. if we rewinded even before that, six months before, that was when I met Brian for the first time. Mm -hmm. I was working as an iron worker. As that time of me working as an iron worker, I just overcame my Percocet addiction, mm -hmm. not six months before that. 
I was still drinking on a continual basis and I was just getting into fitness. So at that time, let's look at it, 2016, that's eight years ago. I was working as an iron worker, $20,000 in debt, two credit cards racked up to the max, no future, living in my sister's spare room or my brother's couch. <laughs> and then fast forward to now, I've paid off every single ounce of debt that I completely had. We did that within like, let's be real, seven months of starting online business in the first place. Julia actually helped me do that. That's why I think it's funny when people are like, that's bullshit. Julia's like, motherfucker, if it wasn't for me, <laughs> we would still be in debt. She manages <laughs> all the money for the business. It's very funny. But yeah, man, fast forward eight years into the future and Julia never has to work a day in her life ever again. We have our dream house in Kelowna. I've got my two dream cars. We're running a multi-million dollar business, impacting millions all over the world. We've got 1,500 active clients that are slaying it in their online businesses. We own a gym in Kelowna, Aesthetic Nation now, which is also super cool because Aesthetic Nation is actually the original name of our yeah. online business. So it's all come full circle now in only eight years. What changed? <sighs> Honestly, nothing. This is, I'm like, what changed was I just pivoted my focus and my direction. Mm. That was it. Because I am I actually had a conversation with someone the other day, and I'm glad you asked me that question. If you look at the drug addict me, all right, iron worker, $20,000 in debt, two credit cards racked up, going absolutely nowhere in life, eating four to seven Percocets before I would black out on a continual basis every single day, walking around with 100 in my pockets at all times, drinking every single night, living in either my sister or my brother's house on their couch, going nowhere, to now, all right, under 30, seven-figure business, dream house, dream cars, dream girl, beautiful family. The only reason why I'm here instead of here is because I pivoted my focus. That was it. Because mm. even when I was an iron worker, that shitty human being that I just explained to you, I was a dog on that field. Mm. Like, I remember being high off my ass one day, steaming because <laughs> of how high I was and how half drunk I still was in a wife beater and a, a harness while it was two degrees outside after it rained. So that's cold. Bro, I was... I couldn't even feel. I didn't eat for eight hours. That's just how I worked. Yeah. My boy Justin walked up to me and he's like, you need to put a jacket on because people are noticing that something's up. <laughs> like you look like a machine right now. Like, you don't look human because <laughs> you've just been out here grinding the whole time. But that's just my, been my mentality forever. It didn't mm. matter what I was doing, how down I was, what was going on in my life. If I was doing a job, it didn't matter if it was Walmart overnight stocking, which I did, mm. pawn shop, which I did, movie theater, which I did. When I stepped in that field, I decided to just be the best. Mm -hmm. So when I decided to look at my life when I was ironworking, be like, enough is enough. I'm sick of this shit. I'm fucking done. I dropped the Perks cold turkey. I stopped drinking for six months before my first fitness competition. And I just pivoted the focus. This is my path now. And I went all in and I fucking dropped everything, completely transformed my life in six months, saw what I could do. And then once I got a taste of it, I was like, oh, this is dope. I'd like to do this for other people. Yeah. Brian set a standard. He's like, absolutely not. He's like, if you win your next competition, now, now we'll talk about you becoming a personal trainer. So literally for another six months straight after just doing six months of prep <laughs> while working 10 to 12 hours outside, I was doing 10 to 12 hours outside as working as an iron worker, two hours in the gym every day, plus my cardio. Mm -hmm. Then I was doing an hour of boxing every day. And I was studying for my CPT through ISSA for an hour every day. I'd get four to six hours of sleep, if not less, and then do it again. I did that every single day for six months straight. Wow. Until I won my second show, first in overalls, just like I did my first one. Came back to Brian and was like, okay, I got certified. I did everything you told me. And he was like, fuck. He's like, oh, now I got to give this kid a job. <laughs> so he started teaching me online business, and that was it. It was just like I had my new path. Yeah. I had the focus. As soon as I saw the new path, I just went all in. For around six months after he brought me on the team, uh, in that time frame, I had one online client, but I was still working as an iron worker. I quit as an iron worker, went up north, became an in-person PT in a camp, Sermont in uh, <laughs> Fort Mac. Did that for three months, hated my life. Brian's mm -hmm. like, quit and go full-time online. I was like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, bro. We were actually all out at Cactus Club. Julia still argues that we were somewhere else to this day, but we were at Cactus Club. Me and Brian <laughs> remember, all right? Um, and he's like, dude, just quit. He's like, I got you. I looked at Julia and I was like, I'm like, I only got one client, babe. She's yeah. like, well, I got you. She's like, I fucking, I'll, ha I'll handle it. Because we were living in our 600 square foot apartment, which was actually an apartment that we were renting off of her parents. Mm -hmm. So we only had like $600 a month in condo fees that we had to pay. Mm -hmm. She's like, I got you. 
Like, if you want to do it, do it. I believe in you. I looked at Brian, and he's like, I will die before I let you fail. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's go. So I quit my job. Within three months, I hit $10,000 a month, and that was history. And we just went fucking full bore and built this massive company that we have today. Insane. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned dream car. What car do you drive? I've got two, actually. So one is a 2021 Audi R8 rear wheel drive. It's a blast, but I can't drive it in the winter and it sucks ass. Yeah. And the second one is a 2020 AMG G63 G wagon. And and do people treat you differently once they they realize that you have those cars? All the time. Really? All the time. And it's very funny because I'm the exact same person whether I'm in the car or outside the car. But they see the supercar and they're like, "Oh my god, do you know how expensive those are?" Yeah. And they instantly talk about the price when I don't think about the price at all. I just think about being that kid looking at the TV show and seeing the whip that I wanted. Mm-hmm. It was actually funny. The R8, the only reason why I got the R8 is because, you know, the movie. Um, oh, my God. What is it? It's got, is it Iron 17 Man? 17 again. Or yes, s- Daniel. 17 again. You know, 17 again. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Bro, so yeah. uh, I watched that show with my baby brother, Dana, when I was a kid. And when he rolled up in the silver R8 to the school, yeah. I remember uh, that was like the dopest moment i ever saw and like a like a younger rich kid show right yeah so when i saw that i looked at my little baby brother and i was like one day i'll be driving that car hell yeah now keep in mind me and my brother grew up in what like fucking eight different homes while we were growing up as kids Mm -hmm. we had no fucking money and don't get me wrong we were either lower middle class or lower Mm -hmm. where we like would have things my parents bought our first cars Two, we had absolutely nothing and next thing you know we're bathing in four inches of bath water because we can't refill the well (laughs) So I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Like, it was a weird childhood. So when I told him that goal, when I told him I'd drive that car one day, it was straight up a pipe dream. Like, my brother's like, okay, bro. Like, sounds good, right? Yeah. And uh, then I got the opportunity. I was looking at vehicles. I looked at my bank account one day. I saw a million saved up in cash. And I was like, what the fuck? I was, like, super proud of self because I remember my first goal back in 2020 was, like, I want to save up 100000 Like, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. I remember looking at the account one day and seeing the million, seeing seven figures, and was like, oh, my God. And then I looked at everything, and I was super hesitant. I'm like, would I be able to do it? And everybody, my accountants, my bookkeeper, they're all like, dude, like, 100% you can do it. Like, (laughs) stop stressing out. Like, you'll be fine. I looked at Julia, and I was like, would you be stressed out? She's like, no. Like, we're good. I trust you. Even if we lost all the money tomorrow, she's like, I trust you. So I started looking at whips, and then that R8 popped up in the August lot. And I'm like, yep, that's it. So rolled down to August, fucking bought it. I was like, that's it right there. I'm super happy with it. That's sick. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. It's a fucking blast, dude. Um, why why do you buy it? Why did you buy a supercar? Was it just because of the childhood the, the thing? Childhood dream, or I think so. I'm like, like but today, why why would you buy it again? I guess like, what's the honestly one of the reasons why I got the G63 and the G63 hit harder than the R8. Really? Um, was because whenever growing up, we didn't have a lot. Yeah. I'm like, we had what we needed and probably more at yeah. some times because whenever I explain this story to other people, I was spoiled and then not spoiled as a kid. Yeah. Growing up, I had what I always say fucking three siblings, but technically four siblings. And the reason why I get mixed up with that, guys, is because I have two younger brothers, but I also have two half siblings that I grew yeah. up with. But around 14, they disappeared. Mm. And it's because my older brother got thrown out of our house and my older sister got thrown out of our house. So I just stopped seeing them. They ended up moving to Calgary, Alberta. Yeah. But growing up, we didn't have a lot. Mm. We ended up getting our first car and then we wouldn't have anything. And then we would get a little bit of money or we'd get the Xbox and then we'd get in fucking physical altercations with our parents and crazy fucking mental and emotional abuse between all of us, not just them, like us attacking them, them attacking us. So it was a very weird dynamic growing up as a kid but i remember not having a lot i also remember being told no a lot and i didn't fucking like it right and some people see that as quote unquote spoiled i saw it as why can't we have the things that we want Mm -hmm. like why can't you have the things that you want why can't i have the things that i want so growing up that way it just reached a certain point where like everyone would ask me my goals financially not the impact goals that i have i was like i never want to be told no again Mm. if i want something i'm gonna go get it (laughs) Like, that is the fucking goal to me. I don't want to look at the price tag. I don't care what it is. I never want to be told no again. If I want it, I'm going to go get it. Why? Because when I was younger, I got told no a lot. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when I was younger, I felt the restrictions of being unable to buy what I wanted. And that shit stuck with me forever. Being told no and no and no and no and no as a kid, it really messed with my mindset and I didn't like it. So I was like, I want to reach a point in my life where I can not only treat myself, but I can treat my people. 
Yeah. I can treat my wife. I can treat my friends. I can make sure that when we roll into wherever we are, everyone feels happy. Like, it doesn't matter if you don't have money. It's going to look like you have money when you're with me mm -hmm. because I want to make sure everybody feels fulfilled. So when it came down to the dream cars, the R8 was like, again, it was more of just for that. Like, I love the R8, but I only got it just because me and my brother had that conversation. <laughs> like, it wasn't like I grew up and I had that all the time, like yeah. that car and was dreaming about it. But the G-Wagon was. Mm. I don't know why. I don't even remember when I really saw it as a kid. I don't remember if I saw it on the street or if I saw it in a movie. But ever since I was a child, ever since Julia knew me, Brian knew me, my brothers, they all know that I wanted the G-Wagon. Mm -hmm. It was just like this weird thing. And I've actually got a video. I've never shared it online. But I took it the first day I drove the G-Wagon down to uh, the pier uh, near the volleyball courts on the yeah, beach. Yeah. And I was bawling, bro. Like, it was like, it was because it was that solidified it. Yeah. I'm like everything that I thought I would never be has changed. Yeah. I'm like, I've got the house, I've got the cars, I've got the family, I've got the wife, I've got the friends, I've got the business. It was like everything that I was told I would never become, like I am now that person. Yeah. So it's like now it's like I get to start clean. I'm like, it's like a fresh start. Fuck everybody's opinions. Screw everybody's self-limiting beliefs that they set on me. I was like getting that car was like this weird switch in my mind yeah. where everything just became real. For me it was like that was a mark of success and i know it sounds weird because like let's be real we were successful way before the vehicles yeah but the g-wagon was like a weird internal thing yeah it like uh, it unlocked something in me that i didn't realize was there yeah so it's the new standard <laughs> mm -hmm. um why do you think most people are broke <laughs> what do you mean like why do you think most i think it was a st uh, statistic that 87 <laughs> percent of uh, americans are living paycheck to paycheck so mm -hmm. they're not saving money why do you think that is? I think a lot of people are broke because of the mindset that they grew up with and the mm -hmm. story that they continue to tell themselves. I feel like a lot of people are stuck in the age old story of their family's lineage. Like this is how we are. Yeah. So they listen to their parents and they listen to their cousins and they listen to their friends and they listen to their siblings as to this is what we do and this is who we are. So when it comes to maybe saving money mm -hmm. or making more cash or starting a business or getting into your current situation, it's like trying to break through a ceiling that you don't understand how to penetrate. Yeah. You're like, this makes no sense to me. This is not what my family does. So when it comes down to spending money, they start to, and then they go against it and spend all their cash because that's what their family does. Or this is what we do. Yeah. And a lot of them don't understand how to sacrifice what they want now for what they want most, that mm. age old saying where even myself like for a long time i was shitty with money let's be real right now i'm shitty with money but i've been able to pivot my focus in a very big way mm -hmm. in one aspect i don't give a fuck about cash mm -hmm. like i really don't dude if it wasn't for my wife right now if it wasn't for <laughs> julia bro we'd not have a lot of money in the bank account it's like mr joking. b is just going I back like, to zero dude, i fucking, spend so yeah. much money bro and it's like not even just on myself but for people like yeah. i don't even display how much that I spend on the homeless that I try to give back to people oh, that yeah. I'll just give back to random people for no reason. Like yeah. we'll just be driving down the street and I'll see someone, all the cash in my wallet is gone. <laughs> this is not an exaggeration. I'm giving away my shoes off my feet, my jacket off my back because it, like, I just don't care. Yeah. Money's money. Like I've proven that I can make some, so I'll just make it back. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but in the other aspect of it, I've been able to switch my mindset to sacrifice what I want now for what I want most. Yeah. Like, let's be real. People see the success that we have now, the cars, the house, what I talk about on a continual basis. But that came based off of our second company that we started, Brian and myself, PT Domination, right? But we didn't take a payout from our company, PT Domination, even though it was making anywhere from $195,000 to $300,000 net on a monthly basis. We didn't take a payout for two years because mm -hmm. we were terrified about the tax man. Yeah. So, bro, we paid ourselves anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars on a monthly basis to hit expenses, allow ourselves to go on small trips and treat ourselves. Yeah. Uh, like treat ourselves. Let's be fucking real. Um, and everything else we just stacked up for around two to two and a half years, the entire time because we were just sacrificing what we wanted now for what we wanted most. So like eventually we'll be able to do what we want to do. Eventually we'll get there. Eventually we'll be able to start taking out money. Eventually we'll become the seven figure earners that we always wanted to classify ourselves as, even though yeah. technically we already were, but we were just 
piling up this bank account. And no, we weren't investing it. We weren't doing the smart shit. We were just stacking a fucking bank account because we're like, tax man's going to fuck us. I don't want to do this. I'm scared to actually invest. And then one day we, uh, we paid our tax bill. We looked at the account and it had like 600K left. So me and Brian were just like, all right, fuck it. Boom. Hit a split like we usually did. Paid ourselves for the first time. And it was like the realization that we can relax because we've got ourselves out of the old rut of being broke. Like the story yeah. that we always told ourselves wasn't the reality. Didn't matter how my mom grew up or my dad grew up or my siblings or my friends. Like that's not me. Yeah. I know how to manage my money now. I've changed who I am as an as an individual. I'm able to sacrifice the little things that are going to make me feel good in the moment to get the life that I've always dreamed of becoming a reality. Dude, that's a huge unlock. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as you've you've climbed, like if if you're talking to a 20 year old today, and even even 16, 18, 20 year old, <coughs> and he wants to start making money, mm. whether it's online or trades or wherever wherever he wants to put his focus, like what, what, what one piece of advice would you give that 16, 18, 20 year old? Become more valuable. Really? That's a hundred percent it. Where yeah. it's like, we can obviously say like, cut out your friends, stop fucking drinking, which is a great piece of advice. If mm -hmm. you guys drink right now or spend any money on drinking, you're wasting your time. I haven't drank since October 26, 2021. Mm -hmm. Literally cut it out completely. It's a waste of money. It's a waste of time and more. We could say, stop going to parties, audit your circle, check your surroundings. There's a, so many different pieces of advice I could give you. But the best piece of advice, if you want to start making money now as a 20-year-old online, is to become more valuable. Mm. I probably get 50 to 20 DMs on a weekly basis where people are like, how do I make money? How do I grow online? How do I get the life that you have? How do I see success like you have at such a young age? And I'm just like, homie, like, what skills do you have? Mm. Like, what can you do? Yeah. Okay, if you're a 20 year old and you want to become a copywriter, can you write copy? Yes or no? If the mm. answer is no, then what the fuck are you talking about? Go learn. Go figure it out. Yeah. And the best thing is we have an amazing tool called YouTube. Mm. Like going back to the content creation uh, conversation we had, yeah. the reason why I can sit down with a videographer or like you or Daniel or anybody else and be able to understand how we're going to shoot, how the sound is going to work, how the lighting needs to be set up, because my favorite YouTuber is Peter McKinnon. Mm. I've been watched every single video on that guy's channel, man. Why? Yeah. I don't know. I just got interested. Yeah. So I wanted to learn. Now, don't get me wrong. I can't use the camera, <laughs> but I understand everything that goes into it. Yeah. And that's why when I stand in front of it, it's like I'm talking to you. I don't even yeah. see the camera there. So it makes it very easy for me to create content. We have YouTube. YouTube has every answer you guys are looking for, and it's free. It makes no fucking sense to me why these people can't figure it out already. Again, it yeah. goes back to the story. People are just making excuses. Yeah. Like, become more valuable. Right, if you want to become a copywriter, you got to learn copy. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's very, very true that a lot of people don't lean into it. You want to become a content creator, you need to understand the platforms that you're on. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard somebody say, I want to blow up and I want to be an influencer? And then you're like, well, do you like Instagram? And they're like, nah. <laughs> you're like, how much time you spend on Instagram? They're like, what do you mean? Like, never. Yeah. Right, I hear that all the time. Like, you need to be on the platform, bro. Like, you need to understand it. You need to know what goes into it. Do a little bit of studying. Understand your analytics. Calculate your numbers. I might not yeah. be great with money. I can read the backside of an analytic breakdown on Instagram like that. Mm -hmm. I know exactly why I went viral. I know where I fucked up. I know where the drop-off and the hit is because I'm always studying it. You need to become valuable in your field. We were able to build a multi-six-figure business in fitness because we transformed ourselves physically saw great transformations, and then we started helping other people with that. Yeah. We were valuable because we understood macronutrients, micronutrients, all right, how to train properly, how to take somebody through a physical transformation either to this stage or just help them lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds in a regular lifestyle transformation. Yeah. So we built a multi-six-figure business in fitness. Then we understood how to do that, and we're like, why don't we teach other personal trainers how to do this? Mm. We have all the skills of building a multi six figure business in fitness. Mm. Let's teach other PTs so they can get out of the gym, so they can be with their fucking families, mm. so they can do what we're doing. So we started doing that. Now we built a multi seven figure business mm. because we understand all of the fitness side, but then we also get organic social media growth. Yeah. We understand the business SOPs that you need to embrace. Yeah. So we just started teaching people value is what will get you the money online. You can't just make money for no reason. Yeah. And I feel like that's where the huge gap is. Like everybody just wants to be the next Bryce Hall. Yeah. Or the next Charlie D'Amelio, where they post a stupid dance video and they blow up like crazy. Listen, you ain't that hot, homie. Like, <laughs> I, I have to tell you, dog. If you haven't blown up yet, 
You ain't that hot, and I get it. I'm five six. Okay, like I don't have to tell you. You gotta embrace the traits that you have yeah. and lean into them. Yeah. And if you can't face that, then that's a fucking you problem, right? Yeah. Like you gotta take a step back for a minute and be like, "Am I that attractive?" Yeah. No. I guess you gotta get more valuable. You lost the genetic lottery, bro. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I ain't gonna be playing fucking basketball or football anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> this is it's actually funny. I was doing a podcast with my homie Taylor Hinton, and he said, "Growing up, you played football, right?" Yeah. He was. He thought he was great. He was doing really good. And then his dad pulled him aside one day because his dad was also his coach. And he's like, listen, I got to tell you something. And I need you to hear what I'm about to say. You are short, slow, and white. You are not going to make it in this fucking sport. You're not even making it on your team right now. But you're great in the personal training realm because he used to be a personal trainer. Yeah. Lean into this. Now he's making $18,000 a month. Because he looked at the reality of like, okay, listen, it might hurt, but his dad looked him in the eyes and said, you are short, slow, and white. You are not going to become this all-star pro bowler yeah. in football. So pick your lane and dive in. He became yeah. incredibly valuable in the fitness realm. He's shredded all the time now. right? He knows his shit, and he's making bank online because he's valuable in his space. Dude, I love that story. Mm -hmm. um, you have a saying, never apologize for being yourself. Mm. What, do yeah. you, what do you mean by that? It's actually funny. So the viral saying, never fucking apologize for being yourself. If people don't like how you act, look, or speak, that just means those aren't your fucking people. Mm -hmm. Don't change who you, are, who you are to match your surroundings. Pick better fucking surroundings and be yourself. That video originated due to the fact that I was speaking to myself. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because let's rewind to the very beginning of our fitness coaching business. I would walk down the street while me and Brian used to work in coffee shops, and I would pull up my phone to go live. I'd pick up my phone, I'd look at my phone, and I'd hit go live, I'd speak for three seconds, I'd delete the live. Mm. I'd do that over and over and over and over and over and over again. And that's not an exaggeration. I'm talking about seven to 12 tries in a row before I would find my flow and actually deliver the message I wanted to. And the reason why is because Brian told me back then, you can't swear and you can't talk how you want on camera. Really? Not because he was trying to cloud who I was, but because that's what people told him. Yeah. And then everybody in my space told me the same thing. You can't swear on camera. You can't act that way on camera. You yep. can't speak how you would speak to a bro on camera. You yep. got to speak through your textbook, homie. Like, you got to sound like you're smarter than everybody else. You mm -hmm. got to act like you're bigger than everybody else. You got to act more professional mm -hmm. than everybody else. And it stopped me from growing. It stopped me from being me. And then I tried to go down that path. So I would do that 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 tries on my live stream, deliver the live stream, and still get comments like, fuck you. <laughs> Bullshit. This is trash. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I just reached a point like, what am I doing? Like, why am I trying to be something I'm not if I'm still going to get disrespected and hated on by a bunch of people who have no idea who the fuck I am? Yeah. Like, people see me and perceive something regardless, so why don't I just be me? Mm -hmm. Now, that's a hard thing for a lot of people to do. Mm -hmm. Because if you are yourself, that means the judgment that you get online yeah. is to you. Yeah. So you can't hide. And that's a very hard thing for people to do because what they'll do is they'll put on an act, they'll put on a front, and then if they get judged, it doesn't bother them because they're not being themselves. They're not acting like they would like to act. They're not being who they are behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. But then they also never truly become who they would like to become because they're hiding who they are. They're hiding their message. They're hiding their knowledge. They're hiding their truth. I just reached a point in my life where I was like, I'm fucking sick of hiding, dude. Yeah. Like everybody has their opinion on me anyways. So why don't I just be me? Not to mention it's exhausting trying to be somebody else. Yeah. Like when I'm in person, whether it's with you, whether it's with Daniel, Brian, my wife, anybody, I am this guy. I start to get passionate. I just start to get super fired up and I swear like a motherfucker. Like that's just how I am. <laughs> so why would I try to act something different online? Because somebody perceives it as unprofessional. Yeah. What's the definition of professionalism? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. You can try to give me one, but last time I checked, I make more than half the guys who are wearing suits online anyway, so why the fuck am I trying to act like them? Hell yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like it's always some dude in a suit telling you to be more professional. I'm like, homie, what's your fucking bank account look like? Yeah. How many people are you impacting on a daily basis? How many people do you actually care about, or do you just care about the paycheck? I care about speaking the truth. Now, don't get me wrong. I might swear a little bit too much for your ears. Yeah. I might say something that offends you, but... I actually want you to change. Yeah. If you can't see that, that's okay. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But I'm also okay with that because there's 8 billion plus people in the world. I'm not going to please everyone. Even if I did pick the professional path or the non-swearing path. Yeah. I just reached a point where I sat down one day and I don't know why these scripts come into my mind. 
or like the way everything is worded comes out of my mind. It's not like I'm pulling up something online and copying this person or pulling up chat GBT because we didn't even fucking have that when I first came up with the script and broke everything down. I just pulled up a camera and I just started yelling. I just, that came out. Never fucking apologize for being yourself. If people don't like how you act, how you look, or how you speak, that means those aren't your fucking people. Mm -hmm. Don't change who you are to match your surroundings. Pick better fucking surroundings and be you. The surroundings might be one person, but I would rather have one person that fucks with me, the real me, so I can be unapologetically myself than surround myself with a bunch of people who are going to change who I am so they feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Fuck that, man. I don't play that game. I've been told to be quiet and shut up and act a certain way for way too long in my life. So, yeah. like, I don't give a shit if you don't like it. I'm just going to be me. And I would hope that everybody hears that and starts being them. Mm -hmm. Starts being themselves. And, like, acting how they want to act, moving how they want to move. Stop trying to move because your mom told you that you should move a certain way one day. Yeah. Or your friend said, oh, I didn't really like that. You shouldn't say that. You shouldn't dress like that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. how many hours do you sleep per night bro <laughs> <laughs> how many hours do i sleep a night it depends yeah. okay i have to say it depends over the last two weeks i've been sleeping like a baby okay? really i'm sleeping like, like a baby why because i've been sick as fuck all right yeah. i just got over a cold i was yeah. able to go to the back to the gym for the first time and it felt i felt like a new man it felt great um but my average sleep pattern is between three and a half to six hours on a daily basis. Really? So breaking it down for you to explain why I only get around three and a half, six hours on a daily basis. And the reason why I say six hours is because some days we'll go to bed earlier, yeah. but I wake up every day at 3 a.m. All right. Really? The reason why I wake up at 3 a.m. is not because if you wake up at 3 a.m., you're going to be more successful. And like, this is the day age time for you to see more growth. Nah, homie, I wake up at 3 a.m. because if I wake up at 3 a.m., I can get enough time to go to the gym and work on me before my son wakes up mm. and before Julia wakes up. And if I wait and sleep in longer, I feel very guilty as a husband to leave the house and go to the gym to work on my fitness so I can make sure that I look a certain way for my companies and for my image online when she's awake and Cade's awake and he's crying. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like a piece of shit doing that. Yeah. Like, waking up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. with her, and then Cade's crying, and I'm like, bye, I found the baby, I'm going to the fucking gym. Like, I don't like doing that. So, it used to be around 4.30 to 5 a.m., mm -hmm. around, like, two years ago, um, and then my schedule changed, so I moved it to 3 a.m., and then I just left it there once Cade was born. So, I wake up at 3 a.m., all right, I do a cold shower, and I don't do a cold shower again for any crazy shit, other than the fact that I have horrible forearms, all yeah. right, I've got a lot of built up carpal tunnel and like tendon problems, et cetera. So the cold therapy helps me with my arms. Yeah. I do a simple morning routine to help me with my mindset. And then I go to the gym for 60 minutes to around an hour and 20 minutes, 15 minutes of steady state cardio. And then I do a box. Then I do boxing usually for two hours every day from mm -hmm. six to 8 AM. Now I'm doing it for an hour just because I'm getting back into the gym based off of being sick. I do my entire work day. And then me and Julia hang out after we put Cade to bed at seven, usually until like, 9 30 11 and then i'm fucking in bed it'll usually it'll be like 9 30 is when i get around six hours yeah. and then 11 i get like fucking three and a half to fucking four yeah. hours of sleep and there we go that's just my routine and again the only reason why i do that is not to flex on anybody else it's just well number one i do feel good the fact that i'm working harder than other individuals that i know yeah. right that is something that i would be lying if i didn't tell you guys that but again, I'm not really doing it for that or for you or for a, the perception online. I'm doing it because if I don't wake up at the time that I wake up, that means I feel guilty leaving my wife and my kid when they're already awake. Mm. So if I can, if I wake up at 3 a.m., I can get everything I need to done, two hours of boxing, my workout, my morning routine, my cold shower, all done before she even opens her eyes. And at night, the reason why I don't go to sleep until Julia goes to sleep around 9.30 to 11 is because if I was like, I need eight hours... I'm going to bed when my son goes to bed and then I don't get to see my wife yeah. because I'm grinding all fucking day. Why am I grinding all day to give her the life and the life that I always dreamed of having? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that's the reason why I only get around three and a half to six, six hours of sleep every night. So most people 
Like, what what do you think about people that say like I need nine hours or I need eight hours of sleep per night? It, it, again, it is it is dependable on the individual. All right, I know that women do need more sleep than men. Period. Yeah. It's how their hormones are balanced. But you do not need a certain amount of hours to sleep in order to operate a certain way you're choosing to. Period. Mm. There's no if, ends, or buts around that. It's just how it is. You do not need nine hours of sleep. You do not need eight hours of sleep. You just don't like feeling a certain way when you get less than that. Mm. So you'll get three or four hours. You will feel lethargic. You'll feel exhausted. You'll feel overwhelmed. You'll feel stressed out because guess what? You operate at a different level when you are that tired. Mm -hmm. It's facts. You don't like the feeling, so you are choosing to get more sleep and therefore neglect something else that you could be doing. And that's just how it is. I'm very blunt and straightforward in my explanations with this. If you want eight hours of sleep, go ahead and get it. I'm not going to fucking attack you for that. I don't care. Yeah. You don't need to be like me. You don't need to be like someone else. If you want eight hours, get it. If you want nine hours, get it. But there's a difference what I just said and you said. I said want in versus need. Mm. I don't need eight hours of sleep. Right? I would want to get eight, get eight hours sometimes. <laughs> but at the same time, I also look at my situation. And I'm like... Me time to make sure that my fitness is good or sacrifice that and don't go to the fucking gym because I don't want to leave my family behind. I'm like, I'm just going to do this and sacrifice a little bit of sleep in order to get there. Yeah. But you do not need eight hours of sleep. You are choosing to get it. And the worst thing is that if you are choosing to get eight to nine hours of sleep and then bitch that you're overweight because you have no time to go to the fucking gym, you need to wake up and smell your own bullshit. <laughs> All right. You could easily sacrifice, get six hours of sleep, go to the gym for an hour, and yeah. you would feel way better. Not to mention, you would feel less lethargic, less stressed, less overwhelmed, less like shit when you did only get eight, six hours versus the eight because you would be more physically fit and healthy through training and working on the body yeah. that you have. But people don't understand that. Yeah. They're like, homie, I can't go on a weight loss journey and lose fucking 20 to 50 pounds because like, I just have no time. How much are you sleeping? They're like, like nine hours. I need that. Yeah. Bro, you don't. <laughs> you need that because your body's working against it because you're not training it. You're not working on it. You're not taking care of it. But if you ate better food, supplemented your vitamins properly, and moved your fucking body, it didn't matter if you got five hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep, you would feel amazing. But they don't understand that. And then they just continue the cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what brutal truth... Have you found out since becoming rich? Mm. Could be a brutal truth about life or about the wealthy. Brutal truth about becoming rich. That's a hard question for me to answer because I am in a fucking hamster ball and don't yeah. know anything about anybody. Yeah. Don't know anything about <laughs> my other than my own situation. I'm like very, very closed off to what's around. But what yeah. I will say is you do get treated differently in a very big way. When you become rich? A hundred percent. Really? And I feel like the reason why is because people expect a lot. They expect a lot. They expect that you are going to be the person that saves them because you learned how to save yourself. Mm. They feel like because you are rich, they are rich, especially when it's family or close friends. Mm -hmm. When you need to know how to distance without feeling guilty for it. Mm. Like no is a complete sentence. Mm -hmm. And I utilize it on a continual basis whether it's family, whether it's old friends, whether it's acquaintances that I used to have a relationship with. I've had to say no a lot to people that were in my circle, and it's burned relationships in a big way, but I use quotes with burned relationships in a big way because I also don't really give a fuck about a lot of relationships that I used to have. Yeah. Homie, I talk to four people <laughs> on a continual basis. If I was to extend that to acquaintances that I like got love for, all right, like, I consider you a good fucking friend. Yeah. But we don't talk all the time, yeah. right? But I've got, like, love for you. I would do more for you than I would for the people that I grew up with, yeah. right? And it's because of how they act and how they move and how they treat money and how they w maneuver on a daily basis. So, mm -hmm. like, even the relationships that were affected based off of me, quote, unquote, getting rich, like, they didn't really affect me because mm. I was able to distance myself from them. But, again, a lot of people feel like when you start to win, they are now winning mm. because... If they were connected to you, they're like, great, I didn't have to do the work. Yeah. And I like to paint the analogy of, like, you need to understand who your third stringers are. Mm -hmm. Because, like, homie, you were the quarterback. Like, you won the fucking game. You were out there grinding the entire game, pushing, putting the goddamn work in, throwing the passes, making sure that you push the team, motivating everybody, grinding it all out. You do not need to give that third string motherfucker a part of your success. 
just because he was sitting on the bench the entire time talking about how you should do something. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Some people might see that as weird because it's like, we're a team. But, like, are you? Like, did they do anything? <laughs> were they pushing you in practice? Were they supporting you during the game? Yeah. When you got off between shifts, were they giving you water? Were they making sure you were okay? If not, then what the fuck are they doing there? Yeah. Like, why do you have them? I've got another analogy that I utilize on a continual basis, and I heard this, and I absolutely loved it. And I, it's broken down like this. Friends are like engines, buoys, and anchors. Mm. All right? Some hold you back and have you spinning around their shit. Mm. Some are just sitting out there bobbing around you, not really giving you any value to your life, but they're not taking away anything either. And some are pushing you forward and holding you back when necessary. Mm. You need to learn how to audit the engines, buoys, and anchors in your life. Cut off the anchors and get rid of them so they stop holding you back and keeping you in that negative place. Mm -hmm. Recognize the buoys so you stop treating them like the engines. And when you find the engines, give them the tender, loving care that they, that they need. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, they're going to break down and they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. And when you understand who is which in your circle, it becomes very easy to avoid the disruption of, again being affected by people walking around with their hands out once you start to see success yeah mm -hmm. dude we're at time that thanks, was awesome bro. man appreciate you coming on thank you bro i appreciate you having me that was sick fuck yeah thanks g appreciate you big dog oh <laughs> my hip is fucked sitting like that for so long bro <laughs> like i sit like this and then i forget that i'm sitting like this because it's so comfy and then i stand up and my whole leg feels like it's gonna break <laughs> It's not funny, dude. It's, it's, it's making, not funny. It's making me laugh. I feel like I'm a fucking 90 year old man, bro. Straight up. It feels like I'm literally like I'm, I'm, I'm like aging myself out right now. Yeah. Fucking just breaking my own hip. And there we go. That's a fucking wrap. That was an absolute blast. First and foremost, Sam, when you watch this, I love you, bro. Thank you. I appreciate you. Secondly, guys, one of the reasons why I will do content days like that or podcast days like that if I have an opportunity is because it removes me having to do all of the thinking and ideation behind it. So like me and Daniel have done that before. You guys actually saw it with the Amarok video that we just dropped on YouTube. If you haven't seen that video, click the little link that's in the I button above um, and you can go check it out where Daniel just asked me a bunch of questions and then I spoke off the top of my head. So what we did with Sam today, obviously, talked about my childhood, my thoughts around having a baby, all right, me growing up, different things that happened in my story. So we can create some clips for social media so we can inspire you guys, challenge you guys, teach you guys, help you guys, because the content creation process can sometimes get boring, all right, sometimes get dry, where you're just doing the same thing over and over and over. When you're able to have an open and honest conversation with someone who maybe might not know everything about your story or might not know everything about your life. Not only is it fun because you guys have a back and forth going, but it also opens up to some very cool clips and some very cool storytelling. So hopefully you guys like this video, you enjoyed this video. If you did, follow Sam, his link is in the description below. Subscribe to the fucking channel. We out, peace. My mind run deep in my thoughts when I didn't have it Sleeping on the floor, wishing it was a mattress Now I'm in Hollywood with actors and actress Where everybody bougie, latest trends and fashions I'd rather keep